Hey there, I'm your host Lasawi, and in today's video, I'll show you how to conjure up a familiar. Once conjured up, he'll simply follow you around. So let's begin. Before we begin, you're going to need an animation. A good place to get your animations is Mixamo, so I'll be using the one that you see on the screen. And one more thing you're going to need before we begin is an effects pack and a animal pack. So I'll be using what you see on the screen, the FX variety pack and the animal variety pack. Once you're back in Unreal Engine and you have the two packs downloaded, we can create a new folder called magic. And inside this folder, we're going to have our magic spell and the familiar spawn. So let's create the character for our familiar. It's going to be called BP underscore familiar wolf or whatever you'd like. And inside of this, I want to select the mesh and I'm going to use the wolf mesh. So if I search for wolf, I should see it. And we can adjust this minus 90 and minus 90 here. So once we're happy with that, we can compile and save. And we don't have an animation for the wolf yet, so let's make that. Uh, this pack comes with all the animations you need. So let's create, um, we can actually even do it inside here. Let's create a animation blend space. 1D and it's going to be for our wolf. So BS underscore wolf. And if I double click and go inside, we can drag in our animations. So I want the wolf, uh, change this to speed first. And I want the wolf to run around 600 is good for me. And then let's find the idle. So I see idle look around. It's going to be one. And if I want it exactly on zero, we can always set it here. Then let's get our walk, which is here. And I'm going to set this at 150. Then I'm going to get my run. And this value I'm going to set all the way at 600. So once you have that, we can save and exit out of this. We don't need it anymore. And let's create an animation and animation blueprint. And again, if you don't see it, just uh, search for wolf and it should come up. So we're using the wolf skeleton create and I'm going to call it AB underscore wolf. So if I go inside this uh, here, we can create a state machine. And this is going to be our locomotion. So locomotion. And in the future, if you have any other animations um, that your character is going to be using, you can always add a default slot. So for example, um, let's say your wolf will be attacking. So it's, it's good to have. We can connect that like so. And let's go inside our locomotion. So inside here, we want to create a state again. And this is going to be called the idle walk and run state. So because we created our blend space, we can simply find it, drag it here, and promote the speed to a variable. Then let's go into the event graph. And from here, we're going to get velocity and from here we will get a forward a vector or vector length sorry if i find it vector length there we go and we want this to be set speed like so and if we connect that our wolf should be able to move uh, so we can compile this save and exit and then inside our wolf, we can simply use the AB uh, wolf that we just created. So animation blueprint, compile and save. And to test if this works, let's create some code inside our wolf. So we don't need those two. On event begin play, we're going to cast to our main character. So for me, it's going to be Brady. And let's get that. Object is going to be get player character. And then we can promote this to a variable called Brady ref and after this we would have our follow um, event so let's create that so custom event it's going to be called follow player then from here we want to get AI move to and our pawn is going to be self 
so the wolf is moving himself and the target actor is going to be our Brady and then if you'd like you can set the acceptance radius of uh, close he can get to you I'll set it at 50 that's fine for me and on success we're just going to repeat this again uh, so follow player so it is in a loop like so and we can uh, comment this code follow player and once we've done that we can call this event right here follow player and if i compile and save this and if i place the character inside the world uh, he should be able to move so let's go into magic and if i place him here uh, oh yeah so my wolf isn't moving around because i forgot to add the nav mesh bounce volume so let's add that and i'm going to scale it uh, to around the world size because that's the area the wolf is going to move in that's about good for me and get a little bit up like so and if i save and hit play my wolf should come to me so that's great that works now let's create the spawning code and magic firstly let's create the widget blueprint so i'm going to create a new folder called ui and inside this folder i'm going to create a widget blueprint and this is going to be called wb underscore mana bar we go inside we can get a canvas panel then i can get a progress bar so i'm going to quickly center or i'll put it at the bottom right uh the x is going to be 300 and for color i'm going to make it a bluish color like so and to see it take action we need to increase the percentage there we are that's blue, maybe even a bit too dark. And for the background, let's make it a little bit darker like so. That's fine. And then let's get a number, a text I mean, and put that into your canvas. And this will be size to content. I'm going to make it size 20. And I'm going to say, 70 on it just for reference we can drag this guy if i see him at the bottom right also don't forget to uh, align this to the bottom right otherwise it's going to be wrong on the screen that's about good for me we can compile and save and if i go to my player character which is here on event begin play we are going to create a sequence so press s and hold down left mouse button zero will go to the old code one will go to our new code and here i just want to create the widget so we can see the mana bar on the screen so mana bar we can do promote a variable called mana ref and one more thing i actually forgot inside my mana bar uh we want to set few um options here so click on the mana bar and go to your percentage and click bind create binding and inside of here i'm going to cast to brady so whatever character you have for me it's going to be brady and get player character then i'm going to get oh can't even get that i didn't make it yet so inside brady let's create the mana and max mana so both of these guys are going to be floats So this gives us a, a normal mana and our max mana. So this will be set to whatever you'd like. I will set it to 100. And my max mana, of course, is also going to be 100. So once you have those two variables set, let's go back to our mana bar. And from here, then we can get those two variables we just created. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to uh, continue. So get our max mana. And once we have that, we can divide them by each other. And then this will go into the return value there. And that's us pretty much done with the mana bar. And if you don't want the text, you don't have to do the next part. But it's good to see for me how much mana I have left. So I'm going to select the text. And I'm going to create a bind. 
and a very similar process let's cast to brady pp underscore brady object get player character and then we can get mana and we'll also get the max mana because i want to clamp this value so it doesn't go above 100 or below zero so clamp uh, float there we go and i'm going to go to text float and from here i will do format text you can break this pink line and inside of the box type squiggly bracket x squiggly or curly bracket and we can connect the return value into x and then the result will go to the return value just before we exit the mana bar let's create a variable called mana because we're going to call this variable inside of our player character so change it to a float once you've done that you can compile save and we can exit this guy and back inside of my character where we created our widget blueprint we can call this variable right now so get mana and our mana is going to be actually not even get we're going to set mana and i want to this value to be our maximum mana i want to start with maximum mana and then we can add to viewport like so and from here let's comment this code called mana bar widget and once we've done that we can compile and save and let's create a input action for our magic spell so find wherever your input folder is go to your actions i already actually have the magic so i'm going to delete this it was when i was testing stuff and let's create a new action input action called ia underscore magic or magic spell whatever you'd like so i'm going to go inside this value save it exit and let's go into our imc right now and create a new mapping and inside this mapping we will take our ia underscore magic and create a key so for me it's already the left mouse button key but if it wasn't and uh, let's just do that again we can create we can click on the keyboard and press any key we'd like so i'll have it on my left mouse button anyways when you do save this exit and let's go back to our player character so player brady let's create a custom event called cast spell and the animation uh, input animation we just created so ia we're going to call this and we're going to call the function we just made so let's start it let's say cast spell uh, there's nothing there yet we want to populate that so um first let's set some parameters um, let's go into our animations into and find the animation that you imported so for me it's the conjure magic i'm going to right click on this and i will create an animation montage so double click into that and find the spot you want your character to perform the spell so for me it's going to be about where the hands uh, clap right click on the line add montage notify we don't need to name it we can save and exit inside of our character viewport let's create a cube and this will be where our spell um the spell is location so i'm going to rename this to if we can rename to spell location and i'm going to have this cube just around there that's good for me and then we want to create one more thing called an arrow this will be where our familiar is spawned so i'll say spawn location and i will drag this guy about there and i'm going to rotate this 180 degrees like so and we can experiment with, experiment with this once you have all of that completed let's go into our cast spell so from here i'm going to uh, play montage and the montage we're going to play is going to be our conjure spell so that's there and the skeletal mesh component is going to be our character mesh connected like so and then 
from here what i'd like to do on notify begin we're going to spawn actor from class and this is going to be our magic spell which we haven't created yet so let's actually do that real quick if i go into my magic folder i'm going to right click create a blueprint class and this is going to be an actor bp underscore conjure spell is good for me inside of our conjure spell let's add some particles from the packs we imported so if you press add and search for particle and the cascade particle system component then simply go to your template and find a particle effect you like so i'm going to use the p underscore ky underscore heal aura that's good for me and if i compile and save that's how it looks like and once that is done let's go back to brady and now we can select we can look for our conjure spell so once you have it that's great for spawn location we want to get the spell location and we want to get world uh, transform connect that into there like so and then after we want to do a delay so press the hold down left mouse button and this is for how long the spell is going to exist for for me about a second is good and on completed i want to get return value from here say destroy actor like so so this is going to be destroyed after it has uh, been alive for one second so compile and save and let's just test that real quick so if i hit play and i never set yeah that works fine but we need to set the block to be invisible so select the block and scroll down where you see hidden in game press that and if we compile and save now if i play the game this works and now we need to spawn our familiar so let's go back into the event graph and create the familiar so custom event this is going to be a spawn familiar and then from here i'm going to get spawn actor from class right we can actually exit up the conjure spell we don't need that but what i will need is i'm going to need the the wolf blueprint so let's go back into our wolf blueprint because there is a specific setting we need to tick and if I look for pawn, I should find it. Uh, da -da -da. There we go. Auto possess AI. So placed in world by default, but we want to say placed in world or spawned. So take that. Now save it. And now if our wolf is spawned, he'll be able to be controlled by the AI. Spawn transform is going to be our spawn location. Get world transform. We can connect that there and from here we can actually just comment this uh, familiar spawn and if i take if i call this event here our familiar will be spawned so i'm going to say familiar familiar here we go and if I compile and save, we can test this once again. So if we spawn, if we cast a spell, our familiar spawns. So he spawns a little bit too quick. So let's fix that. Let's spawn him at the end. Not at the beginning, but at the end. And this should allow it to work perfect. So there we go. We have that and the familiar spawns. So he moves a little bit too fast. So to fix that, we can actually go into our um, pp underscore wolf. And after follow player, what we can do, we can say uh, delay. And for duration, we can get random float in range. And the minimum time is going to be one second and the maximum time is going to be three seconds. So it's just going to randomize that for us. And whenever he follows us, that's where it's going to get it from. So connect that once again. 
compile a save and now if we spawn our familiar he will follow us but not immediately we'll wait a bit there we go that works fine and now to drain some magicka while we do it so back inside of our brady character in the event graph uh, let's create a custom event called mana drain and for this we need a new variable called uh da, da, da. it's going to be called spell cost so for this let's compile and say the cost of the spell so for me 20 is good so i will get my mana minus the spell cost so get a subtract then from here i'm going to set the mana again and this is our spell cost for the familiar and if i connect like so we can comment this and say mana drain it's fine and one more thing so let's call this event here mana drain so we know we're draining some mana from here uh, let's go to our cast spell again and get your mana get your spell cost and from mana get is greater or equal to and if this is true we'll be able to cast our spell otherwise that uh, when we don't have enough mana we're not going to do anything so connect that like so and if i compile and save our character should be able to lose some mana when we cast and spawn our familiar so there we go and i'm pretty sure we can spawn up to five wolves so let's just give this a quick try that's wolf number three wolf number four and wolf number five so there you go guys five wolves no more mana left and i'm pretty sure i can't spawn anymore yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial if you liked it leave a like if you didn't like it leave a dislike and as always happy developing